I'm David Brooks, but you can call me Brooksy. This is me f***ing freezing after not completing the Winter Classic. <laughs> well, at least I got some sympathy and a cuddle. I'm not exactly in good shape for this, you know, with my pale white English skin. Apparently, you need a bit of fat on you to be a champion open water swimmer like Nick. And also not to risk hypothermia like this bloke here. They say if you drink and swim, you're a bloody idiot. You've probably come to the conclusion I haven't been doing this for very long. In fact, the nearest I've been to open water swimming was when I played cricket with my dad on Blackpool Beach. Us bombs and water, not a good mix. You know what you say about us bombies? You're a soap dodger. This is where I live, Brighton, founded by Englishman Henry Dendy in 1841. Dendy bought 5,120 acres for one pound an acre. Brighton, the home of Shane Warne. Cafes, roundabouts, four wheel drives, but no terrain. Now these lot here call themselves the Icebergers. I thought I was an Iceberger for 10 years, but it turns out I was a teabagger. You know, you go in, have a bit of a splish and a splosh and a wiggle, and then out and have a steam. So how the hell did I get here? Why am I doing this at 59? Am I going crazy? And who the hell are the icebergers? To answer these questions, let's go back a few years. In 1981, as I was getting the runaround by Sir Bobby Charlton, I was offered a soccer contract in Australia. When I arrived, they said I was a cross between Simply Red and David Beckham. Unfortunately, I played soccer like Simply Red and sang like David Beckham. Who can forget this moment of madness? I can play the great show Marx. But things got even crazier. And crazier as I ran the Sydney City to Surf as Borat. And here's yours truly on what I thought was the ultimate challenge, a charity boxing night. Even this didn't knock any sense into me, but nothing that I'd done before had prepared me for the toughest challenge of all, cold water swimming. This is the Middle Brighton Sea Baths, first built in 1881, in the original home of the Icebergers. This is my 7 a.m. ritual, you must feel like you're in Scotland, mate. It is very Scotland, this. I'm English anyway. I've got an English hat on. That's why we built that wall to keep the Scottish out. Forget that. Freedom! Freedom! <laughs> Laughing, having a chat. What a great way to start the day. Look at me, I'm wrapped up, it's freezing. Look at you going out, John, every morning. What does it mean to you, like, starting off your day? The day doesn't start until we've, we've had the, uh, the exercises. Yeah. Yes. There's also the companionship down here. You know, yeah. The fellows are, are, are great to, to be with. And, uh, and know, females. Uh, well, I mean, there's a few pretty females yeah. too, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then the steam room. And here we have the University of Brighton. Where I'm studying <laughs> bullshit. I'm not terribly good at recognising them. <laughs> A new one came recently and was in the, in the steam room there. And I thought, she's a lovely, lovely girl. You know. yeah. I thought, how, how, to, how to start a conversation with her? And she was so young and lovely. And I, so I said, uh, are you a worker or a student? No, she said, I'm a 41-year-old mother of three. <laughs> 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 she kept herself beautiful by running down to the uh, Sandringham Yacht Club every day. Oh, fantastic. Yes, yes, I must yes, look out for her. That's yes, my, yes, my age. Yes, yes. Have you got a phone number, John? Oh. Well, John's going in for his daily swim. 50 years. And I think he's got another 50 years in him as well. So that's been my morning ritual for 10 years, and nothing's changed. Until now, when I noticed some other swimmers coming from the yacht club. Loads of them. I'd never seen them before. I said to Dennis, who's that lot? 
Is there a race on? Gee, they can't half swim. He said, that's the other icebergers. They used to come here, but they moved on over there. I asked around and some say they started here, but they moved on. There's two presidents. We have our president, Barty. Can't start the day without it. It's just the most fantastic experience. And they have their president, John Locke. Well, they're under the rules. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like a chemical wetsuit. But the curiosity is getting to me. I wanted a challenge. Who are the real icebergers? Who are the teabaggers? Anyway, I'm determined to find out. Maybe I'll make a fool of myself. I can't swim. I can't walk. The shark's out there. Told you I couldn't walk. I don't think it's going to be as easy as what I first thought. I thought you could just actually go down and have a swim, but... Apparently not, so anyway, I'm going to find out what, what Mr. Locker will say. Thank you for calling. All swimmers, please take the opportunity to leave an elongated message. Everyone else come briefly to the point. <laughs> uh, John, um, it's, it's David Brooks, Brooks here. I'm, uh, I'm a member of... What, I've, I've rang John Locker, left a message, he's uh, rang me back. And he says, meet me on the beach at one o'clock near Brighton Pier. I'm getting a bit nervous. I feel like I'm going to meet a magistrate or something like that. I feel like I've done something wrong. I only want to go swimming. The Royal Brighton Yacht Club. Gee, my mum would be impressed. Look at the size of him. Bloody Tarzan. Look at his hands, they must be about size 15. Oh. <laughs> Fair yeah, the bloody killed me. Huh? And you want to have it David, is it? Yeah, I've been over there for about eight years swimming. Yeah. And one day I saw yeah. a sea baggy or well, well, no, grain. No. What are you actually doing? Did you, you hear that? Having a swim He's taking the mickey out of me. Or you, or you he just called me a tea bagger. A teabagger, my friends, is a swimmer, jumps into the water, has a quick splash, and jumps out. That is a teabagger. Well, anyway, he's invited me down on Sunday to this big swim what they have, the Olsen Hooper or something like that, and he says, you'll meet everyone, bring your camera, you can take some shots. Look at them all. Look at them stupid outfits they've got on. You'd never catch me in one of them. I'd like to introduce to you David Brooks, if you'd like to cooperate with him. David today is commencing a project where he's going to film the icebergers over the course of the year. <laughs> he's actually making a film about you blokes. I don't know why, but he is. Cheers, Brooksy. <laughs> Did you hear that? I've only come down for a swim. He just announced to them all, I'm making a movie. How ridiculous is that? Next thing you'll be saying, I'm going to swim with the Premier of Victoria. And was it who, is, who is this man? Who is John Locke? My grandfather took me down here in the middle to late 50s. And I can remember coming down on a Saturday morning and having a queue up from, from the entrance back to the Esplanade. So it was very, very popular in those days. So I've, I've had that sort of association with the Bards. It was a never mixed baby when I was there. Right. You had the men on one side and the women on the other. I used to have to walk down a ramp yeah. and then walk down another ramp over the water to the Bards and all the baby boxes were up the top. You've got to be consistently and persistently in the water yeah. and, and present yourself in a condition that you're able to take it on. So this is my 40th winner. 40 winners. 40 winners, yeah. Every day. Well, I've declared my hand. I'm going to go and have a swim with these yacht burgers. Hmm. I wonder what the bass burgers will think. Will they disown me? Will they not talk to me? So, so you're in, are you? Well, it looks like I've been, in, I've been invited to come in. And there's John Locko, 61. I've always swam inside the bass and I feel a bit more safe though, you know, because I'm still I'm still worried about these bloody sharks. But anyway, 
I'm going to start to swim in the open water and be, hopefully become one of the icebergers over here because I've just discovered today that we've got the icebergers over at the, at the bass and we've got icebergers over here at the Yacht Club. What I'm finding out, which is interesting about why there's yacht burgers over there, is that when it was closed, the, the swimmers here, the icebergers, have nowhere to go. So they went across to the yacht club and they swam there. When it was reopened, what happened? Half of them came back and swam here, and half of them started swam over there. So that's why we have two icebergers in each location. So today, I'm going over there to the yacht club to draw, go and have a look at what's going on over there and then go and swim with these guys outside the cage. Am I on Phillip Island? A middle brine pier. They look like blooming penguins. Hundreds of them. Look at them jumping in. It's hilarious. <laughs> How am I going to get to know all this lot? I know. There's a safety dummy in the showers. I'm going to get in it and have a laugh. the roll of honor board. Gosh, look at all them. There's loads of them here. Look at them all. To get your name on this board, you have to swim a full winter every day. The International Swimmer of the Year. How funny would it be if I won that? The Winter Peter Pub. Hey, that's my goal, yeah. The Winter Peter Pub in Lawn. I'm going to do it. That's my goal. <laughs> Let's have a look. Here we go. The world's biggest open water swim. Wow. Here we go. Ted. A lot of burgers are here wearing suits, so the burgers have approved wearing suits here, but we do winter pier to pub in July, and that's strictly no suits. I can't believe that. They wear wetsuits in summer when it's warm, but in winter when it's cold, no wetsuits allowed. a pub in the middle of winter freezing cold water it's madness but these lot love it they enjoy it they actually look forward to it well i better get ready apparently this is the iceberg's equipment for winter no wetsuits this is it this is all i need for swimming here we go we've got the cap keeps the head warm slightly then we've got this is it the rubber cap this is what saves you from your head getting cold. If you haven't got one of these, you're struggling. And then, the good old budgie smugglers. Why are they called budgie smugglers? A budgie smuggler is someone who steals budgies and hides them down the front of their bathers to bring them into the country. That is a budgie smuggler. <laughs> now I am an iceberger with the lot. Well, it's off for my first swim with the penguins. No turning back now. In for a penny, in for a pound. They've all left me. Where have they gone? Help! Help! It's about 15 degrees, but I'm feeling it cold already. But still, we got May, and then 1st of June is winter. After that swim, it was a shock to the system. I was shivering. I had to go back to bed with a hot water bottle. I was cold to the bone. It actually worried me a little, so I'm having to seek medical advice average temperature is 37 degrees and mm -hmm. hypothermia is 35 degrees so it's only a two degree difference. Well let's weigh you yes. and measure your height. Uh -huh. 
We're going to go to the big wave. And I'm a bit worried now about doing this winter swim. I wouldn't mind you gaining weight. It's about a half hour swim. Oh. It could take me, I don't know, from half an hour to an hour. Okay. In all honesty, you probably should have a heart check. Did I hear that right? She said a heart test. Well, I better go and ask my mum, have we got any heart issues in our family? Any excuse to get back to the land that time forgot. Very famous for Sir Robert Peel, Prime Minister of England, also the starter of the police force. They were first called the Peelers. One day, my statue will be next to Sir Robert Peel from being the biggest idiot to go to Australia without stealing a loaf of bread. Oh, wait, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, God, what the neck flow? <laughs> now, here we are with my mum. I'm my Auntie Dorothy. They all look a day over 98. <laughs> They're all happy that I'm going to... Oh, boxing! Oh, no, not again. But, Roxy, how are you feeling? I feel great, Harry. Uh, it's Peter. Harry. Jeez, I'll tell you what, he's got you a beauty. That is absolutely... Your face is a mess. It's always been a mess. But your eye, jeez, there's a few stitches in that eye. Yeah, but um, that wasn't the fight last night. That was this morning. I run into the door on the way out. <laughs> and they're all, they're all behind me for this big swim coming in August <laughs> to be the only... the bird from Bury to swim with the icebergers <laughs> in Brighton and do the channel or get hypothermia. What do you think, ladies? Load of rubbish. <laughs> Well, I got the OK from Mum, I think. I'm off to Deakin University to see Professor Steve Sillick. There certainly are risks to yeah. swimming in cold water, which are if the wrong person in the wrong situation gets into freezing cold water and exercises very hard, that may trigger a, a cardiac arrest or a heart attack. What we're going to do here is test your heart and your lungs under exercise conditions. Obviously it's not the same as being in the cold water environment, but it will at least tell us um, how your heart and lungs are performing in at a good level of exercise. We're going to start at a very low level of exercise and we're going to gradually increase the intensity, mostly by using um, gradient. If performance was helped by cold water or freezing water swimming, yeah. why don't the officials throw ice into the Olympic swimming pool? And uh, when you get into cold water, the reason your skin turns purple is that the blood suddenly decides, I don't like being cold, and the yeah. blood moves into the chest and the abdomen, in other words, the thorax. I would call cold water swimming the conditions to be very suboptimal. I'm yet to send a client from here into deep water, cold water swimming, and I won't be doing that in a long, long time. I've noticed that the iceberg is that half jumping mm. and half gradually go down the steps. Well, they're both idiots. <laughs> right, so when I'm shivering, do I go in the steam sauna or go in a cold shower and gradually warm it? Or the other alternative is not to do it in the first place. Yeah, well, the icebergers are actually a little bit down the animal chain compared to the normal <laughs> human being, but they are animals. Bloody hell! <laughs> the professor 
Oh, there'll be a few icebergers shaking in the boots now, and the wives as well. Don't go cold water swimming. Well, I'm bloody more confused than ever. This cold water swimming is more dangerous than what I ever thought. Bloody hell. Gosh, I've got to think about this now. Well, that's the professor. Now to the dietitian to get fat. Wait till Johnny Loco sees that. Hi, Emma. Hi. Brooksy, how are you? Hi, Brooksy. What has happened? Uh, I took up cold water swimming. I was okay. a teabagger in there, but now I'm going to go across the road and do this unbelievably cold water swimming. Great. Try and attempt to do the pier to pull. Excellent. However, I've been to the Dr. Alice yesterday, mm -hmm. and she's advised me to compete against hypothermia, I need to bulk up. Okay. So the idea is to eat more, really, okay. um, but you want to try and get it from whole foods. So we right. want to look at using um, healthy fats and good proteins yeah. and things like brown rice and lentils and legumes and all of those sorts of things because they've got the enzymes and the vitamins and the minerals that are all going to help you to perform at your best right. when you're training and swimming but also um, help you to gain weight when we have that really quite large intake of food. Organic flakes, bloody porridge twice a day, protein drinks. So I've got to eat, eat about five meals a day from when I get up at six o'clock in the morning to when I finish at 11 o'clock at night. So I'm non-stop eating. A few of them said to me, ah, oh, just build up, just get McDonald's in and all that, I know, but I don't want to put it on here. It can be effective to actually bulk up that right. way, but people tend to feel really lethargic and, yes. and quite flat. So okay. there's no reason why you wouldn't put in just a little bit of extra time and effort yeah. and just go the whole food way. Tofu. I, have ne I thought tofu was an island off Greece. Anyway, you eat that, apparently. Well, I've seen a doctor, I've seen a professor, I've seen a dietitian, but I still can't swim. All I need now is a good coach. This is John Van Wiesen, a legend of open water swimming. I've set myself a goal. I want to do the Winter Peter pub. I can only swim probably about 25 metres without getting out of breath. <laughs> so I know you have swimming lessons, so can you get me through the Winter Peter pub? So I have to see you first. Let's get in the pool and see where you're at and right. play it by ear and build you up, build up your technique and see how well you adapt and take, take it as it comes. So you're overloading your freestyle muscles. You're a little bit more on your side than freestyle, but you're still... You've got to uh, be able to handle the cold, so you've got to have the body fat to sustain, sustain your heat around your organs. Right, OK. So the um, body will start shutting down. Work, work out a technique that gets you up on top of the water and, and, and gets you relaxed while, while you're doing it. Relaxed? Yeah, I mean, you've got to, you've got to have a stroke that's natural for your... Oh, right, for OK. You, ...for your makeups. We'll do it, Brooksy. <laughs> <laughs> I must be dreaming. I'm drowning. I'm singing. I'm boxing. It's all, it's all, it's all a nightmare. My wind is shrinking. going to be like in that water oh, bloody hell the water is going to be freezing I've only been in about 18 minutes. I'm freezing. How, how these icebergs do this? Oh, it's not even bloody cold yet, but it is cold for me. There's a couple of icebergs who swear by this cold water swimming. They swim every day, they're fit, they're healthy. 
Oh, it's 5.55. Doug's getting himself ready with all his equipment. And this gets your day started, Dougie, then, every morning. Every morning, I, unless I'm sick or something, which doesn't happen very often. My father used to bring me down here and when I was about four years old, but we used to swim in the old bars then. It's 7.5 the air temperature. 7.5 the air temperature. And, Ooh. and every morning I email the bars and tell them what the temperature is here. Fantastic. It's 12.4. Oh, it's a bit warmer. 12.4, a bit warmer than it has been. Right. Anyway. And I'll see you, Brooksy. Go on, you Dougie. We'll get you coming off. I sometimes see a few water rats out here. Do you really? <laughs> yeah, they swim, swim over from the pier. <laughs> and Doug was never seen again. Only joking. Well, I've been coming down here for about 34 years and uh, it's the start of the day for me. Uh, it's uh, an excellent uh, and the most exhilarating thing to do. It's a healthy addiction for a long, active life. They never regret a swim. I'm finding out now that there's one bloke, Hugh O'Connor, he swims 100 big courses in winter every year. That's not madness. That's insane. And look at this mob. They call themselves the A-Team. They swim at 6.15 every morning, wind, hail, rain, shine, snow. Now, they are crazy. Now, this lot swim at lunchtime. They call themselves the captains of industry. No wonder there's a recession. It all culminates on a Sunday morning when everybody gets together at ATM for one collective swim. They even stop at the pool to chat about current affairs. So I've set myself the target to swim the Brightons of the world. And by my count, there are nine or ten of them. Whoa. So far, I've obviously wrapped up Brighton here in Melbourne, or Brighton Beach in Perth, yeah. Brighton Beach in Gallipoli, Whoa. Brighton Beach in the south of England, Yes. and there's a handful still to go. Right. But it's a mission. And I can say I've also swum right in the very bottom of the South Island of New Zealand. And that was cold. That was lonely. That was rough. I'm sure they're with us. <laughs> it's not just the icebergers that are mad. I reckon it's all swimmers. At Half Moon Bay every year, they swim around the Cerberus, the three-headed guard dog. It's the only remaining warship of its kind in the world. And the major prize for the first swimmer is a bride. Yes, the winner gets married on the beach. You won't see me winning that one. It's gonna be cold in that water this morning. Winter is setting in, look at this. It's the John Locko Winter Classic. The president's named the swim after himself. Fancy that. This will be my first step in my journey to becoming an iceberger. If I complete this, I will feel more confident going into the Winter Peter pub. Got a cap, my hat and a cap. That's all I need and my budgies, that's all you need. No wetsuits allowed. Who made those rules? John Locker, no wetsuit allowed, it compromises sport, it devalues it, it uh, takes the heat from the contest. If you turn up in a wetsuit, you ain't fair to Yes, I don't make it, I've had a great life, thank you. The 
channels in front of me, I thought, no, I'm going to do this now. I feel all right. I'm going well. My goal is to not win this, it's just to finish it. This, this will be unbelievable for me because the, the most I've ever been in so far is 16 minutes. I'm only about seven minutes away from my record, but it's going to take me about 30 minutes. But yeah, I'm going to go for it because I'm not going to give up. I'm going to do it. It's coming up to like 15, 16 minutes now, and I'm, I'm the dog beach is my next, my next point. But because I'm going slow, I'm getting more colder and starting to get worried now. I'm, I'm actually uh, shaking a bit. And you're cold in the periphery, and your body gets a sudden rush of cold blood to the heart. It can change the electrical behaviour of the heart and go into an irregular rhythm. Bloody hell, is that a vulture? I made the decision on going back now. This is a bit silly. I'm, I remember what, what, what John Deneen said to me. He says, look, Brooksy, if you feel it, turn around. Don't be a hero. There's no heroes in this. I'm, I'm getting cold now. And, uh, it, it, yeah, I need to get back. So I need to turn around because I am bloody cold. It's surviving now because you, you don't think of anything else now because I'm bloody freezing. just got to get warm and get there because it's just hit me now when you come out. I've got that cold wind coming on me. I can feel it in my bones and I feel very lightheaded, ridiculously lightheaded. I think I'm going to faint. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a feeling I've never had before. I've heard them talk about this, about this hypothermia that once you start getting lightheaded, that's when it's kicking in. I need to get back to the steamer as quick as I can, but I'm actually colder now than when I was in the water. It's a weird thing. My jaw's numb, I can't talk properly. Never, ever experienced anything like this. You're challenging the elements. It's just you and the ocean and a, and a pair of budget smugglers in a hat. That scared me out there. Again, in this data from Western Australia, they looked at 100 swimmers and 20, 22 swimmers, so about 20%, got hypothermia. Mm -hmm. And yeah. one out of the 100 ended up having a heart irregularity. Sauna. Yeah. Oh, we've got Serpo in there, he's done a big course, he's struggling big time, he's collapsed. Dr Belinda is round him, trying to warm him up. They've got about 12 of them now putting their hands on him. His feet are freezing and bloody cold now as well. But he's in a bad way out there. So yeah, hypothermia is certainly one of the major fears, I think, that people have. You know, it's a potentially condition and so, Ensuring that people don't get hypothermia is an important part of being an iceberger and something that we're actually, um, we learn about, I think, as we're becoming icebergers, what are the, the things, to, the uh, symptoms to look out for. This is iceberger weather. giving up now, eh? No way, I'm going to do this Peter pub, but I really need now to take this serious. Especially after just failing the Winter Classic. It's made me more determined than ever. Just got to swim every day now. I have to get in this water. Yeah. It's more than swimming this. What is it? Something that's uh, hard to explain, coming out of that cold water in the middle of winter, 
wondering why you've done it, but you've had this fantastic exhilarating experience. You've gone hard, you've done some great exercise, you then jump into the steam room, and it really is a great way to start the day. Great way to start any day. Great way to be part, to enjoy part of your life down here in the bay. It, and friendship and camaraderie, I use that word a bit, but it is, it is about, it's something about the icebergers. It's about our behaviours and our culture. Yes, there really is something about the icebergers. Greg Fountain early this year had a tumour removed. Here's Greg being welcomed back into the fold. Where's, where's Greggy? Great, fantastic oh, to see you here. Hey, hey. Apparently they did find some brains in there. <laughs> Since you've been out of water, Greggy? Uh, since July last year. Since July last year. Yeah, Thank you, Greg. A double big toss again, like we used to. Do. Give us some applause for Greg. Hey! Yeah. This sums up what the iceberg is all about lifelong friendship and mateship. Well, off goes Greg. He's had his first swim up to the pole and back. But did you see the smile and the satisfaction on his face? He's back in the water. And that is every iceberg's dream. Every day to be in this beautiful water here off middle Bright Beach. That was filmed earlier in the year when the water was very kind to Greg and I. The winner of the Winter Peter Pub is awarded the Greg Fountain Medal. If this doesn't inspire me, nothing will. This is it, it's finally arrived, my goal, to take part and finish the Lawn Winter Pier to pull. Brooksy, Ross and I were a little bit concerned that he couldn't swim the distance. We know he can stay in the water for 25 minutes, but we thought it would take him more like 40, 45, perhaps, to swim this distance. So we were a bit concerned because the whole idea of keeping this just to Brighton Icebergers is that we know our swimmers can swim that distance in the cold water quite competently. We want to see him stay out there and if he doesn't come back that'll be good for, for Australia. Hey Foxy, I'm an Aussie now. Oi, oi, oi. I think Brooksy's up against it. But I'll tell you one thing about Brooksy, he'll have a go and if he fails, he'll fail gloriously. Let me tell you, there'll be a story in it either way. I mean, no turning back now. All that hard work and preparation comes down to this. You're on your own with the elements. It's scary. You know, maybe the mad professor is right. If you're caught with a cardiac arrest in cold, deep water on your own, away from, well away from help, um, that's not a great situation. He's been here for a couple of minutes, that's long enough. Go, hey, Brooksy! <laughs> Well over 30 minutes 
And I'm getting colder by the minute. There's no one else around. There's no one else around. My mind's playing, My mind's games. playing I games. I know what the icebergers are talking, about, are talking now. about now. I've never been in this situation before. Now I know how Harold Holt felt. Where's a Chinese submarine when you need one? <laughs> Did Brooksy survive? That is the question. We hope so. We hope so. I did it! I did it! Yes, I did it! <laughs> a year ago, if somebody would have told me that I could have achieved this, I would have said that they're crazy. Now I've done it, it proves that I am 100% crazy. 1.2K with no wetsuit. Unbelievable. Hey, does this make me an iceberg now? Well, I finally get my name on that board. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I feel fantastic. I now understand why these icebergers put themselves through this pain at the start, because the reward at the end is magnificent. It's more than swimming, it's a way of life. Thank <laughs> you. 